Mm, it's not so hot in here tonight. No, it's nice. Weekly. Weekly. You know what else? What? It's uh, October the 2nd. Wow, it's October. October 2nd. Yeah, and we are here. Uh, player 1, Player 2. We're here well, to talk about... Uh, see, I didn't look past today. <laughs> oh, really? So, technically we're recording on Thursday. <laughs> so, if your, if your birthday falls between September 29th and October we'll 2nd... We'll get you next week. We'll get you next week. We'll get you next week. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, news up first. CC Weekly. What do we got? Uh, Retrobit Generations Console. Oh, that sounds awesome. Yeah, so it's kind of like a plug and play. It's kind of like the the uh, NES Classic. I think they're kind of kind of thing. Yeah. But um, I give, give me a price. I think it's the same as the NES Classic. Fifty nine ninety nine US. Yes. Yes. Sweet. How many games? A lot. Ninety six approximately. Yeah. Yeah. I think awesome. So. Tell me some of the great titles that are on there. Nineteen forty two and forty three. Uh, the Super Ghouls and Ghosts and and Super. Or I think, regular. I think they have both. Okay. I'm not sure on that. Those are the only ones. Bionic Commando? Is that on there? Mm-hmm. No, those are the, the ones I just said are the only ones that stood out to me. <laughs> um, yeah, it's uh, plug and play, like the NES Mini with a bunch of Capcom and Jalico and Data East games. Yeah. Um, it's 60, none of the games really. Uh, Bionic Commando and Ghouls and Ghosts, but I already own those. But it looks like a good deal. It's got uh, AV out and. Uh, I accidentally typed retro HDMI. butt. HDMI. Retro butt generation. <laughs> retro butt? Yeah, by mistake. I'm just looking at the it's game list website. here. See if anything's pop up. So quickly go over the list. All right. Well, I know the top two are 1942 and 1943, which yeah. are shooters on the NES, if I'm not mistaken, which I remember enjoying. Um, okay. You want me to go through this whole thing? Yeah, rip it off quick. Dude, there's nothing good. 2048, I don't even know what that is. Ten Yard Fight, Aguna. I'm not saying all these. I'm going to say the ones that... That are, that are good? Yeah. The ones that are good for you. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. Bionic Commando, you know. Yeah. Solid. Uh, it's an expensive Bionic Commando. My God, there's a lot of not good. But I mean, some people might go, Gunsmoke's on here. I think some people like Gunsmoke. Isn't that a shooter? It's kind of like a top game? down. No, I think it's like uh, you're a cowboy. Yeah. It's like top down. Uh, it's there. It's if it's got games you're interested in, it's a great deal. Sixty bucks for ninety six games. Kick, but kickle cubicle, I like that. Yeah. Uh, much like the Atari flashbacks and the Coleco flashbacks, I'm not interested in any of the games on those. Uh, so this to me wouldn't even be something on my radar. Dark Fight Three, maybe. Uh, There's about four dude, games on there that is, I would play. So this is brutal. Um, I hadn't heard about this until uh, our good friend Julian Vega pointed it out to us. And, and I see why. <laughs> but seriously, if you're into the, a lot of Capcom games, a lot of Dead East games, I mean, they don't have a lot of the, the big titles. Uh, no Mega Mans, no Castlevanias. Or that's Cat Konami. That's Konami. Yeah. Yeah. Um, man, you could have done just the NES Capcom games and it would have been worth it there. <laughs> yeah, well, they probably couldn't get licensing for it, right? Because this is an actually licensed product. It's not... Uh, uh, like a cheap ripoff. Uh, okay. I think it's being made by the guys that were making Re Retro? No. So the link that he gave us was this is being sold via them for a discount. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, but it's made by Retro Bit, who does actually make uh, uh, fairly decent quality products. Okay. Uh, just the, the uh, guys over at Re Retro were selling it. That's where the link came from. Gotcha. Um, yeah, not that interested, but, you know, if, it's, if you want to go for it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, good luck. I don't know. It's not not from. There's only of the ninety six games. There's three or four maybe that I would play. Yeah. So uh, no interest. Yeah. No. Same here. Okay. Next up, we have it's the Nintendo sixty four birthday. Hey, birthday Nintendo sixty four. Yeah. Happy birthday, Nintendo sixty four. Off top of your head, you got a top one or two uh, N sixty four games? Uh, let's say Star Fox and Shadows of the Empire. Ooh, good ones. Mine would be Ocarina and. Um, Probably Yoshi. Oh, yeah. sorry, no, no. Kirby. Oh, Kirby, really? Yeah, man. That oh, Kirby. Super Mario 64. Oh, my God, I forgot about Super Mario 64. Okay, Super Mario 64 is the top. How did you forget about Super Mario? <laughs> I don't know how. Super Mario 64 and then Ocarina. Okay, so uh, Kirby just got bumped. Oh, yeah. Kirby's <laughs> not even close. <laughs> All right. Kirby, Super Mario 64 left such a mark on your psyche that you forgot it existed. I love that game so much. It transcended the generation. It's so funny because it's so good, I forgot that it was on the Nintendo 64. <laughs> <laughs> this is so good it could be on the Wii. Yeah, yeah, it could have been. All right, uh, Stardew Valley um, is offering divorce in their games. 
I thought it was kind of interesting. I didn't know they offered marriage. Yeah, it's kind of like Harvest Moon. Oh, like, okay. It's like a Harvest Moon clone. And I didn't get divorced. Yeah, I think it's the first game I've ever heard that lets you do that. Is this the, you know, this is the future, I guess. Yeah. Interesting, right? Because hmm. you always think about, you know, you pursue the, the girl, whatever. You pick what girl you want, and then you actively try and get her. And then now you get divorced. I wonder what happens in the relationship. I don't know. You didn't do a, uh, I just realized two things in the middle of this recording. But we'll keep going. What? That news means nothing to me. Oh, all right. Uh, <laughs> next. Beyond Good and Evil 2. Maybe. Teaser. Not once they hear our podcast. Oh, boy. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. We, uh, nobody actually, the podcast got fairly, it, it, we gave the game a, a fairly decent review, I think. Yeah. Uh, nobody hated it. Nobody went crazy. Nobody. Right. It's just sort of middle of the road. It, it is. Yeah. But there are people who love that game, and I can see why. Yeah. It just wasn't exactly for. Yeah. Anyway, we'll, you'll see in the podcast. Yeah. Well, you would have seen because it's out before this. Yeah, which I actually have on here too for update later. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so what were you going to say? Uh, no, just we forgot to come up with a topic for rants, and we also, oh. you didn't put out a poll this week. I did not. Solid. Moving on. <laughs> CC update, unless you have more news. Oh, kind of a dry time for news. All right. CC update. CC update. Lots of stuff. What do we usually start with? Game uh, of the Month talk? Yeah, we usually go uh, Game of the Month talk. So Game of the Month uh, is officially Dead Space. You got it on the yes, PS3, you got it on right. the Xbox 360. <coughs> um, play this game. I think you get it on more than that too now, don't you? you, can't, you I, don't know. I don't even know. Get it on that. Uh, it stars Isaac Clarke. He is an engineer, so you don't... He's a Instead of being the regular gun-toting, muscle-bound hero, he's an engineer. He's a smart guy, someone you can relate to, uh, who has a, a girlfriend that he uh, is going to find. She went missing on this ship. It's Yoshi Knuckles. It's Yoshi Knuckles' life story. It is, yeah. It's actually it is the creation of Yoshi. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it is a dark, creepy, suspenseful uh, horror shooter. Yeah. I think I, I wouldn't say survival horror because there is enough ammunition. Because we played through that first time and it was just with the main gun. Here's the problem. We had no problem. With... Although we played it on easy, didn't we? That's what I was about to say. Resident Evil had the same problem where you shouldn't be able to pick your difficulty in games ever. <laughs> they should all just be as hard as they are for everyone. They should say, this is how hard. I'm so good at games. No, no. They should say, look at Dark Souls. That there shouldn't, be, there shouldn't be an option for you fucking plebs. <laughs> no, no, that no. aren't as good as P2. That's not what I'm saying. They should yeah. beat the games. You should have to be so good. You should. The only way you should be blessed with seeing the ending of this oh game. Oh my god! Is, is if you're as good as P two. They games. have let's plays for uh, if you don't. <laughs> anyway. Um, oh my god! So they should Such pick the difficulties that the game should be, and then that should that should be it. I don't believe you should be able to pick difficulty in games. Okay. Um, <laughs> All right. Um, what were we talking about? Dead Space. I'm really looking forward to playing it again. Right. Oh yeah, we were talking about before survival horror. It definitely would be survival horror if you cranked up the difficulty to what it was supposed to be. Yeah. Um, we played it on easy, which I think was the right move because we're not that skilled at shooting things. <laughs> no. <laughs> but who knows? Maybe this time I'm going to play on normal. Yeah. Which I'm assuming is what they intended it to be played at. Yeah. Well, it would be the normal setting. That's what I'm thinking. They wouldn't expect that people would just want to experience their in-depth story and uh, beautiful uh, <laughs> scenery. Nope. Not at all. No. No. You are such an elitist. We're talking about movies? Sorry, moving on. Um, uh, I'll speak of a Game of the Month talk beyond Good and Evil podcast is out now. Yes. Three days ago. Four days ago. Yeah. So go check that three out. Three days ago. Great time. Great crew. Yeah, really good time recording that. Uh, we had Pam... From Media Mavens, we had Lo from And Then She Games. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to start saying Lo is from the Cartridge Club. Because she is. Yeah. She uh, is. And Mighty Q-Dog from the Q-Dogs. They're also from the Cartridge Club. Yeah. I guess. Everybody is, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> uh, great show. Really good time recording it. Um, really enjoyed hearing different points of view. Yeah, me too. I'm curious to hear uh, what people think of the podcast. Yeah. Because, yeah. uh, you know. Because we didn't really have anybody on there who, like... Oh, and oh, loved the game. Pam loves the game. There's no doubt. She was open about that. I just suppose. And and I can completely understand why people would be in love with this game, especially if you played it back in the day. I but I, I don't think Pam ever had any of those moments where she was gushing over it. Like, this is so the amazing. podcast. Yeah. 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 But I mean, think about back then. You gotta remember that this came out during the PS2 era, which is yeah. like the weakest time for video games. Yeah. <laughs> people do not agree with that. No? <laughs> but that's how I see it. So... I can see how a game like this coming out in all of that sludge would really stand out. Yeah. 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 We're getting more opinionated. 
<laughs> Moving on. Um, also, Game of the Month talk. I went back and I read Super Mario Sunshine forums. <laughs> Just wanted to see. Oh, and I also went back and read Secret of Mana forums. These are all games that you that, hated. That I wasn't particularly fond of, and I was curious how I wrote about it. And it, the Secret of Mana ones are really funny. My first post is like, oh, yeah, this is pretty good. And then I, you can see it get worse and worse every post. <laughs> um, but yeah, so sometimes it's fun to go back and read those and see what people were thinking during the time. Um, so if you're playing any of the games from the past, just leave a post there. You can still post on it. Yeah. And uh, and I love going and seeing people going back and playing it now. I think it's pretty interesting. Um, but yeah, what do you want to say now? <laughs> For update? Yeah. Uh, big happy birthday. Yeah, Adam. Yeah. Happy birthday. birthday. He's 30, I believe. Is he? I think. I mean, him are like the same age. I mean, it's J Rock. I don't know. Yeah, me and J Rock. Ontario boys same are pretty age. much the same to me. <laughs> I watched some as well. I'll be one entity. Yeah. <laughs> I caught some of uh, J replayability Mars. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> I caught some of Adam's latest uh, game trivia thingy. Whatever yep. it was when I was rocking the baby. Um, was yeah, the, it's was the uh, the audio portion cripplingly hard? Dude, there are some <laughs> hard questions there, dude. Hard questions. Um, yeah, that audio is tough. It's yeah. tough. Because you, you immediately, your mind goes one way, and it's, it, if you're right, you're right, but if yeah. you're not, you're never you're not. coming back. You're not coming back. No. Anyway. Uh, uh, happy birthday, buddy. Yes. Also want to say a uh, big welcome to Matt Bandy. He uh, yes. joined the forum, made a post in the Hello Timmy section. Yep. He's uh, been following the club since 2014, which is crazy. Yep. Just recently joined uh, the discussion, so welcome aboard. Awesome guy, really interactive. Um, it's it's funny that he's just recently on there because I feel like we've been talking to him a long time, but I think it's just because he's so yeah. active. <laughs> just an active guy, nice guy. So welcome, Matt. Um, oh, the Q Dogs, they posted up their uh, sort of like behind the scenes video. Yeah, they... oh, I haven't seen that yet. Oh, it's it? so good, dude. Yeah. It's so good. Yeah, check it out. Check I it out. watched their in the Q Dog host this week where they talked about watching Civil War. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, and Mrs. Q Dog said she wants to go back and watch all of them from the beginning. I'm pretty sure it's for the fact that all the guys are uh, <laughs> built like brick shit houses, because that's why Colleen wants to keep watching them. Understandable. Yeah. Every, every time, every time yeah. I come home, she's watching Thor, and I'm like, what? <laughs> it's on pause. Why are you watching the same three minutes of Chris Hemsworth without a shirt? I'm just, like, I'm just trying to get into the lore. Yeah. <laughs> I love Marvel. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, Chico, they posted their uh, like behind the scenes making for the CC United video. I'll definitely I, check I, that I think out. I think it's only accessible on the website right now. Oh, cool. I'm not 100%. No, it's definitely on YouTube. Yeah, it's on YouTube, but I think I don't think they like tw tweeted it out or anything. Oh, okay. I think, yeah. Anyway, definitely um, check it out because it's awesome. And check out the, the music video if you haven't seen that yet, which is by Duke. Yeah. After Nonsense Crew. Uh, as well, we had uh, the two-year anniversary of Retro Fandango was uh, uploaded. I haven't had a chance to see it. Two years. Um, so it's... September, oh, we're both, I didn't realize that they started in September. Yeah, they started at, our one, at the end of our one year. Oh, it's yeah. kind of neat. So yeah, their uh, two-year anniversary is up. It's uh, on the Retro Fandango feed, and uh, it's just Kevin and Richard. Uh, and they have a guitar off, apparently. Oh, it's just those two? Yeah, and Richard announces uh, what the next game is for Beat My Score. So I'm not going to spoil that, so make sure you check that out. Yeah. Uh, two I'm more, looking forward to trying that. Two more things from me before I hit Twitter. Uh, Musty Hobbit and Dean Lasagna are getting a room at Portland Retro Gaming Expo, and they have a spare bed in that room. So if you're going to Portland and you don't have a hotel booked yet, get in touch with either Musty Hobbit or at round underscore two underscore gaming okay. uh, and see about staying with them. Musty actually has a spare room booked oh, really? as well as a bed. So if there's a group of people who need a room, reach out to him on that. Yeah, I was just curious because you said spare bed. Yeah. Um, so does that mean there's three beds or at least two already bunking up? Uh, I, I was under the impression that Musty and Dean were going to be uh, All right, I just in to make one sure. bed yeah. and then you would be in the other bed. Yeah, that you or, listener. I do know that Dean uh, prefers to sleep in the bathtub because he has a massive heroin addiction. <laughs> and, uh, late at night when he's banging heroin, it's easier oh, for him to be on a cold porcelain surface. I see, I see. Um, yeah, so man, I'm jealous that everybody gets to go. I'm jealous of Dean's heroin addiction. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, uh, you may be able to get to share a bed with Dean or Musty, so this could be your year to go. Yeah. I can't think of two sexier clubbers. I nope. mean, if Curtis shows up there, that's a Holy that's one hell of a three club. I think, sadly, Curtis already said he couldn't go. Oh, yeah. That's sad news. So if you're looking for a room in Portland, get in touch with one of those guys. Yeah. Um, and bring a video camera. Yes. And go last up, before the Twitter, uh, the Mystery Box has officially made it to its first destination. Woo! And that is Bill from STC Pod. We talked about this on We talked about it going. Did we talk about it going to Bill? 
I thought, uh, yeah, I think we said he got it. And you oh. said him and Joe are going to go through. Okay, so they made their choices uh, on what they're doing. I, su- I suspect you'll see a tweet or a video soon on what they took. And then they're sending it off to its next occasion. Even I don't know. Oh my gosh, I'm very curious to know. And did they show already what they got? Or are they no, they did. I asked Bill and he told me because I was curious. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's funny because he was like, I took this and Joe took this. And I was like, I don't even remember putting that in there. <laughs> like, do you have the right box? That's awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, so are they going to do a video or something, I wonder? Uh, I think so. Uh, a video okay. or maybe just a couple of series of tweets. And then they're going to send it off to its next uh, guest. Awesome. I'm excited next to see who gets it. Okay. Speaking of that, I do have them on here as well for their uh, episode 101. Their fall TV lineup. Yeah, I won't be watching any of those shows. Man, they all sound so bad. <laughs> <Oops>. <laughs> so bad. Um, but if you guys watch it, definitely let me know. Um, tonight I'm drinking U Force. Yeah, and you just sprayed it all over my head. I spit a lot because of this U Force. You can only buy it at Ultramar, so you know it's top quality, classy drink. <laughs> Ultramar. Really? It's a gas station. Oh, yeah. Is that on everyone? It's probably Rocket Fuel. Yeah, you get it at Ultramar. Uh, so, I, I'm assuming that's, that's what the U stands for. <laughs> and it really gets you jonesed up. Anyway, moving on. I bet. Look at this. It's covered in. in I'm so spit. sorry. Um, oh, uh, a friend of mine, Jason Petrie, he. Uh, He's, a, he's the guy who gave me the box of legend you see behind me, as well as my master, box master system. Uh, he just he just recently gave me a Model 1 Genesis with a Sega CD. Mm-hmm. But uh, he was listening to our show last week, and he wanted to let us know that as a solely Xbox gamer who can't afford to keep uh, oh. PC gaming up to date, Fair that enough. he was very much excited about the Skyrim mod option. Uh, it already exists for Fallout 3, mm-hmm. or 4. And uh, oh, I didn't know that. he was uh, really stoked to have it for Skyrim because it's a, se- a game he loved. Can, and he's looking big, big time for the opportunity to be able to do that. Can you mod Fallout 4 on Sony? Uh, I, I don't know. Oh, I'm, I'd be curious to know that. Yeah. Well, I'm happy he gets to do it because Xbox is still yeah. stoked. <laughs> so <laughs> there's the target audience. There you go. There you go. Awesome. Um, yeah, I can understand that though because I would be in the same boat. I mean, now I can do it. Because of something that we're going to address later. Yep. All right. <laughs> so uh, back to Twitter. Uh, hashtag CC update. We're going to check out your videos and we're going to announce them on the show. First up, we have uh, a weekly pickup vlog from Chase Godin or Godin. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong. I like wrong. Godin. At Chase Mad Gamer. Uh, he had uh, a few pickups there. Some Pokemon cards. Yeah. A couple of good games. Bloodborne was in there. What more? Uh, yeah. Assassin's Creed Black Flag, I believe. Oh, Let me know three. how Black Flag is, uh, Chase, because I used to love the Assassin's Creed series until number three. And then I stopped playing completely because it was fucking garbage. So let me know how that was. Uh, so we'll have a link to his uh, video in the comments below. Also, I should... Anyway, I don't have time for it anyway. Anyway, go ahead. I was going to say, I should start putting my PS4 ID out there so that I can play with people when they play Bloodborne and stuff, but I'm never on. No? Never mind. Why don't you put your Wii U ID so you can play with them when you play with that? Because it says that you haven't been out logged on in six months. <laughs> that, uh, that, yeah. yeah. Next up... Uh, yeah. Retro Kaiser wanted to let us know that for the, the closing days of Beat My Score in <laughs> September, he bought an actual Pac-Man arcade. Holy crap, is that legit? Yeah. Cabinet? Yeah. Oh my god. Uh, and he was making a, a run at the, the title with that. And, end of the month, he's getting rid of it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. As well, we had another video from Canadian Retro, a uh, great club member, one of the nicest, he's a nice most guy. genuinely nice guys you could ever meet. Uh, he had a pickup video from the Waterloo Game Swamp. A lot of good hits in there. Uh, Uniracers was the one that he picked up. That uh, Uniracers. I, mean, I remember playing Uniracers with Drew and Brendan. <laughs> really? You remember them? Yeah. Cousins we haven't spoken to in yeah. a decade. Nice guys. I haven't seen them in a long time, though. But, um, yeah, Uniracers. I used to love playing with them. Cool. Yeah. Uh, and one more from Retro Kaiser. Schmucktober is being uploaded. The first episode will be up October 1st. So that would have been up uh, a couple days ago. Yeah, so I think he's doing less plays for a lot of shmups. Is that yeah. what it is? Yeah. Look forward to seeing that. So that's it for Twitter. So if you want to get your video or podcast or blog shout it out, uh, just use hashtag CC update with a link to your video, podcast, yeah. or blog. We'll check it out. And uh, also, if it doesn't suck, we'll talk about it on the show. We won't. Either way, we're probably still talking about it. Oh, um, no, bonus no. Barrel. New Bonus Barrel this week. They're back. They're full, full up. First full episode. Back. We're going to talk about things that sucked. Oh, my <laughs> gracious. <laughs> oh, my. I'm going to pretend I didn't even hear it. No, just kidding. Yeah, Bonus Barrel's awesome. They're back. So Sagey moved. He moved out west. But uh, this was the first episode where they're all back together. I mean, over... Google Hangouts, I'm guessing, yeah. I think. Also, I may or may not be... Uh... Don't spoil it. We'll All, right. it All right, we'll save it, we'll save it. Uh, as well, there's a new <laughs> podcast that I want to shout out. I'll do it after. When? Some other show. Okay, okay. Is it the one that... Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but they're really good. I tweeted them, check them out. Yeah, they're awesome. This pod- mystery podcast I won't name. It took a long time to find that podcast. <laughs> yeah. All right, so uh, moving on. All right, moving on. So what's up next, CC? Uh, let me guess. 
Spotlight. Yeah, you got it. it. All right. So All this right. this month we're gonna uh, this week. Remember when our shows used to be this guy months. deserves a month. This guy deserves yeah. a month. So we're gonna spotlight him for the next three shows. <laughs> one, he should have his own spotlight every one week. for each of his own uh, ways of communication that are amazing. <laughs> he uh, he's one of our favorite people. We joke around with him a lot. We talk to him a lot. He's inspired us. He's motivated us. He's mentored us. Yeah. He's uh, molested one of us. He's just a, a fantastic guy. Uh, if you're on YouTube or Twitter or uh, Facebook, he's one of the best people. He's on Facebook too. Yeah, well, his actual Facebook. That's only for oh, like okay. cream of the crop. Wow, VIP. Yeah, gotcha. Um, and now that I've added him, I can't get rid of him. <laughs> and uh, he might be coming to the wedding. Uh, oh man, that would be awesome! Yeah, Holy crap. yeah, I know he was looking for a bunk mate. Um, yeah, wow. Well, I mean, he reached out to a couple of guys to see. My baby's probably going to have her pack and play. Oh, no, I don't think I want to be. He's coming. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, so uh, he's a vintage video game geek. Vinny. Yeah. Our boy Vinny. So, he's pretty much the reason we're sitting here right now recording, I think. Yep. I mean, that was four years ago. and Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So if you don't know Vintage, he, uh, he does videos on YouTube. He used to have a podcast called Hit Reset Radio that was fantastic, was mostly good. because of John Pio. Um, and Dickie Dana. Yeah. Good crew. And, uh, yeah. Those two carried the show, really. They were all awesome. It was a good crew. Following that, he had another podcast called Retro Rejects. You may have heard of that one. NES Complex, where, again, NES Complex carried the show. <laughs> they, made, uh, they were a dynamic duo. They were. They had to stop. Chris started to develop back problems. From what? Uh, the weight of carrying the show. Oh, there it is. <laughs> oh, boy. All right, let's move on. Uh, no, Vintage is fantastic. His videos are really he good. He... Uh, he started to go back and uh, HD remaster all his old uh, reviews. He he doesn't need to do that, man. He's fantastic. They are good. He's we'll doing go current uh, like a new awesome. new series called Geek Speak, where he interviews members of his family or other people in the gaming community. He uh, and it, it is a guaranteed fact that if uh, if he watches your shows or he listens to your uh, podcasts, you will get a comment from him. Yeah, um, sometimes multiple comments. Sometimes, yeah. Like yeah. Curtis Scott. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's cool because he comments as the ideas come yeah. up. Was it Curtis or Aaron? Curtis. Okay. No, it was Aaron. Aaron, yeah. It was Aaron, Aaron yeah. yeah. I told him to get a new shirt. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. Got a whole list. It was great. He does that with us too, and I love those comments. I think yeah. it's great. But make sure you respond to them because um, if you don't, then you'll get messages. Yep. <laughs> also, um, I try to do it when he does. Like, you know, like leave them all and people do not like it. But when he does it, it's very yeah, endearing. Really it, yeah. So when, endearing. When you do what you're a spamming asshole. Yeah, you're like, get out of here, man. Yeah. <laughs> Why you call, why'd you comment seven times? <laughs> That's seven different yeah. emails I have to delete. Now. Yeah, Vintage does it. And they're like, oh, man, Vintage commented on my video seven yeah. times. Because Vintage is a big deal, and you're it just is. you. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Less than that, actually. Yeah. <laughs> so Vintage Video Game Geek. Check out Vintage VG Geek. Uh, go back and re-listen to Retro Rejects. Go back and listen to Hit Reset Radio. Check out uh, the Mega Man X episode yeah, of Christmas. Cartridge Club. He's on that. And as well, look forward to checking him out on this month's He was also uh, Dead Space episode. On God Hand. Uh, I wasn't here for that. I know. Check him out on God Hand. So, yeah, definitely check out Vintage. He's fantastic. He is. He's awesome. I'm sure everybody here already listens to him, but... Probably. You definitely should. Yeah. That's and, a, and he deserves a spotlight, at least. I feel like we just showed it out the New England Patriots. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. Next right. up. Uh, next up is CC Rants. Yeah. <laughs> Did we pick one? No, we didn't. We didn't come up with a rant. We have nothing. So we talked about height. Um, yeah, we uh, talked about height. We talked about delays. Yeah. yeah. No, we have nothing. No, there's nothing. Nothing to rant about. There's nothing I'm angry about in gaming right now. Um, it doesn't have to be a rant. We talk about, um... Talk about VR. Dude, I love VR. Let's talk about VR. All right. I, I, don't, I don't love VR. I am excited for VR. I want it to be huge. Yeah? Yep. You want to strap a block yep. to your face and I play wish I games could. without being able to see your kid? The only problem with VR is I don't think it goes over your ears. <laughs> 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 I wish it completely encapsulate me. I, I don't. I'm not in there. I'm not sold. I don't ever want to be in a situation where I have to do this to see what's coming to my left in a video game. I don't even care. I just want a TV strapped to my face. I want to play the games I play now without any difference to them whatsoever, except I can play them on my face That's without taking up a TV. That's not. And the VR stuff's cool too. I'm sure I'll enjoy that sometimes. I'm not. I think it's. I honestly think VR is a fad like 3D. You remember when the PlayStation 3 came out and it was 
3D TVs, and you can buy the glasses, and you can play two-player split screen, but instead of split screen, everybody, both people got a full screen because yeah, of the glasses. Yeah, that was dumb. And that was dumb, and it <laughs> did not stick around. And I think VR is going to be the same. Everybody who plays VR says it's, it's great. It's $600 for a PlayStation VR. Gross. I will not buy that. Maybe it's $400. I think it's 400 American. Yeah, so that's 600 Canadian. Yeah, that's why. That's like 800 rubles. All right. <laughs> Um, I want it. I will not be paying full price for it, obviously, because I'm broke. Uh, but I want it so bad. You know what's funny is... Name three VR games you're excited for. I don't... I can't think of any. I'm not excited for VR. <laughs> it's really hard to explain this. Uh, I just hope that I can play every game on my face. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. I don't. How really... many times have we sat here in these chairs and said it's all about the games? The hardware doesn't matter. It's about the games. It's about the games. It you is. Can't, you can't name three games that need VR. It's the same as the Wii U. If you can't tell me why I need that gamepad, why the fuck do I need to strap that thing to my face? You do not need that gamepad. Um, and you do not need to strap this thing to your face. I want it strapped to my face. I want a TV strapped to my face. Why? So that I don't have to take up a TV. I can put it on. I can. Think about it this way. Now, look at it this way. You love what? Your 3DS, right? Oh, yeah. Because you can play it on the go. You can do whatever you want. I can put this VR thing and play it. I can play my 3DS before. while I'm driving. You play VR while you're driving? You probably shouldn't do that. <laughs> I drive a Mazda CX-5 and they are incredibly safe. Um, <laughs> but I don't know, man. I just love the idea, which is kind of like playing on the Wii U gamepad. Same thing. Okay. How often did you do that? Never. Never. Not even once. But... That's, that because, is, that's the option to not use a TV? Mm, no, because I'm looking at a little tiny screen. When it's on your face, it's hold like... Hold it here. It's like... <laughs> you hold your game, it hold your game pad right here. <laughs> I want it to be like I'm looking at a 60-inch TV without having to buy a 60-inch TV. But for $400, man? No, I will not be paying Because much. they're not giving if, you the option. It's not like... Strap this to your face and use it as a TV screen. I know, I know. If right. it said that, that's you know, that's what I would buy. I would spend four hundred dollars then. But the games are going to immerse you in the game, so you're going to have to move your head around to see stuff. If I mean, there will be some things that I like doing that with. What? Like name one. Like name uh, something that you wish you could really turn your head to look. Um, fuck, man, I don't know. <laughs> um, I guess you'd be able to. Do wow, that. you are selling me. Uh, I'm not trying to That's sell it. VR. I'm in. There, Sign me out. There are, <laughs> the only experience we have with VR is that Oculus Rift. That was and that was cool. And it was cool. It was awesome. It was. But I'm, I'm not going to sit there and do that for three hours. No. But that's because we weren't playing games that would interest us for three hours. I'm not saying that there are or are not software that it's going to be awesome for it yet. Um, it's still... But it's, oh, the Oculus Rift has been out for almost six months now. Oh, man, those ones and the vibes, I don't care about them. It's The only one that ever interested me was the PlayStation VR um, because you don't need to buy a computing rig to use it. But well, um, you do. You have to buy a PlayStation 4. Right, and I already have that, so that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like I said, if, if I can't use it as a TV, it's a hard sell for me. It's a hard sell. So you don't want VR. You just want closer TVs. Yeah. <laughs> I just want a TV in my face. What about you guys? you interested in VR. What are the selling points for you? What are some software titles you're interested in? Yeah, I mean, people talk about these stuff. Who's Wars getting games, it? I know so. Julian Vegas probably going to get it. I'm relying on Julian to get it. Because <laughs> I need to know if I can use it as a TV. But anyway, everybody loves these things when they get their hands on it. And I'm sure we would too. But... No. Uh, it's hard, man. I don't... I, I, I don't... I don't. I already don't like first-person games. Mm -hmm. Imagine how little I will like them when I have to physically move my body. I just think of... I hate this. Uh, this is the Wii. Um, um, thank you for clarifying. <laughs> I don't... Pick, it's hard because I can picture myself being dropped into a really cool environment and I get to explore it. Yeah. That sounds great. Looking around, walking yeah. around. I think that nope, sounds awesome. not walking. Sitting on your sofa. I know, I know. But looking around is amazing. And you're walking with your PlayStation Move controller. But in order to see behind you now, you're obviously going to have to stand up or turn yourself around. Yeah, but you can turn and like, I don't know. I guess um, the Star Wars games are pretty cool already. Oh, I'll, I'll stick to my Super Nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> if I can play with that Super Nintendo right here in my face, <laughs> I'm on board. I'm, I'm not even the slightest bit interested in VR. I am. Not even a little. I am. I am. I do not think it's the future of gaming. I think it's a massive mistake and we'll lose a lot of money for a lot of people. 
I like well, I said. I also thought the Wii U was going to be a smash hit. So, <laughs> like I said, I don't think VR is going to replace normal games. I just want it to be able to play normal games as well as VR games on my VR headset. Makes sense. Good luck. You know. Come on, Julian. Hope you get your face TV. Hook me up, bro. Moving on. We're right. flying through this week. Man, we are. This is a fast week, which is good. Yeah. Because um, last week was long. What's left? Answers? Answers. CC answers. Here we go. Answers. First up, Musty Hobbit. At Musty Hobbit asks. Yes. Who's your favorite video game villain and why? Mm, man, this is tough. This is tough. You know it's going to be a Final Fantasy character. What? Because they're the best <laughs> villains. <laughs> I mean, you can always pick a Dragon Quest one. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Who's your favorite Dragon Quest villain? Name one. I don't know. I, don't, I just beat like three of them. Like, I King, know. King Slime. I just play, Slime. play Dragon Quest him right now and I can't remember villain. Exactly. Um, I would probably go with... You know what I also can't name? What? A single main character that I hate. Lightning. Oh. Name a single main character again? That, that just name one? Yeah. Prince Kaifer. <laughs> Alright, cool. Maribel. He's all from seven. Edric. What's some what's one from uh eight that we played for the cartridge club? Uh oh the little chubby guy, uh <laughs> Jess was the girl. Jessica, yeah. And I can't remember the little chubby guy's name. Well, you got one, that's good enough. <laughs> anyway. Uh, villains, villains. Um it's either gonna be Golbez who ends up in that. I mean no spoilers. Uh, Golbez, Kafka, or Sephiroth, really. Those, that's it? You're just limiting it to those three? That's it? <laughs> Who else is there? Those three possibility. Bowser's a villain? Yeah, I guess. Uh, Dr. Eggman? A Donkey um, Kong's a villain? I'm gonna go with Kafka. And the only reason I'm picking Kafka over Sephiroth, and I'm not saying that one, I mean seven is probably my favorite of them all, but six and seven are really close. Anyway, Kafka purposely is evil, you know? He's just evil to be evil, uh, whereas Sephiroth just kills people because he wants to destroy the world, but he doesn't really know why. He's really confused. Anyway, Kefka is just pure evil. Um, I'm going to have to go with Kefka. When he poisoned that castle, oh my god. Mm. That's bad. That's bad news. That is bad news. Kefka is a bad guy. But Sephiroth did burn Nibelheim, didn't he? Anyway, moving on. I'm going with Kefka. I'm going to say Gan. Uh, oh, from Zelda. Yeah. Gain it. Yeah. That took you way too long. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to think of what Final Fantasy it was in. <laughs> I'm going to go with Ganon. Okay, fair enough. I think he's a, he's a well-fleshed-out villain. Uh, I like that he seems to be aware of the fact that he's in this constant battle with the hero of time. Mm -hmm. And like it's like, oh my fuck, it's this kid again. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I like that he has that sort of knowledge of the fact that it keeps repeating where nobody else does. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. And uh, I just think he looks cool. I like Ganon. That's a good choice. Yeah. yeah. I thought so. Yeah, good pick, good pick. Uh, how about you, Musty, and everybody else? Yeah, just curious. Kefka, I think, is a, a popular one. That's a, it's got to be top five overall, I think. Yeah. So, uh, Vintage Video Game Geek at Vintage VG Geek asks... Woo, Vintage, check out Vintage. Um, and the C4 is <laughs> He says, uh, so your CC answers Geek Speak argument is invalid. I guess it must be so. Uh, I trust him. And I, he I says, don't remember uh, what he said about it, but... He said, why is it called CC Answers when we ask you questions? Should we call CC questions? Because the Cartridge Club answers. Um, the, we, the cartridge we're club. telling answers. We are the founders of the Cartridge Club. Oh, the Cartridge we Bros. We are giving them answers. Cartridge Bros answers. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I fucking hate you. Uh, so he said, where is the CC Weekly form? So Vintage, there is no CC Weekly form. However, on Sunday when the podcast goes live on iTunes, Stitcher, uh, and Google Play. I feel like we discussed this last week. Yeah, we did. He keeps asking. Uh, you can go to the website, www.cartridgeclub.org, where you can also find the podcast has been uploaded there to the podcast's page. <laughs> Hold on. We definitely discussed this last week, and I think we agreed to make a forum, didn't we? No. I think we said because nobody no. really knows where you can comment. I'm telling them right now. Okay. <laughs> I go. I'm telling them. So if you listen to the show and you want to leave a comment, oh my. you can go to the podcast's page of www.cartridgeclub.org to the Cartridge Club podcasts where you can find the CC Weekly podcast that will be uploaded on Sunday and you can leave a comment through the Discus system which allows you to log in with Twitter, Facebook, 
uh, Google, all that stuff. The same way you log into the forms I'm in it now. Uh, and leave a comment I got it. on there. Uh, there is no CC Weekly forms because there's already a lot of forms on there, and I don't know what we would have a forms for. I don't know. I mean, I, I get emails when I get it. If, if you leave a comment on any of the uh, videos, podcasts, or blogs, we get an email telling us there was a comment. If you uh, leave a comment on a form, we don't. So there'd be no way for me to know uh, as of right now if you comment on there, short of checking it every day, which, let's be honest, I'm not going to do. I like when people comment on Twitter. I like uh, when they tag us. I like us. that too. Um, so um, definitely comment on Twitter. Vintage, you comment on every video. <laughs> <laughs> and the podcast... Or the videos. <laughs> yeah, I guess you have that option too. I thought about disabling that and having the forum. I thought that maybe it would be centralized then, but you're right. We so do you want to put it up to a vote now and see what people want? No, no. You? you can pick. I don't want any trouble. Comment on the podcast. He hits when the camera's <laughs> off. Thanks for your question, Vintage. <laughs> yes, thank you, Vintage. Check out Vintage. Steven Eider from Cat Max Gaming and the Hypecast Podcast. Woo, Cat Max. Steven Eider asks... When can we expect Cuddle Bros? Right now. So, uh, that is, no, that is the, uh, the, Force. the photo that we're supposed to do uh, for the uh, one console challenge for losing it. And you know what? We can go upstairs. We can call and snap a quick picture of us. Okay. Um, you can throw on her onesie. And, Just looking uh, at me we'll a quick picture. And we'll post it on Twitter. So you'll be seeing it on Twitter before you hear this answer, Stephen. Really? We're going to do it right, like right now? Yeah, that's what I just said. Oh my gosh, i got to drink more U-Force. <laughs> Next up. You should stop that, man. That's fucking... No, I need it. You sound like a, a crack addict. I need it. <laughs> it's so good. It's only two for four bucks. Next up, we have a question from Kyle. At Kyle underscore 325 underscore. Mm, Kyle. So he says, what direction should Sony go if they decided to do another handheld? I just realized we don't have the mic hooked up to that camera. Oh. Oh, boy. There are going to be some vintage comments about the audio. No. <laughs> but where will he post them? Anyway, um, Kyle, yeah, man, that's a tough question. Um, I'm not a big fan of the Vita, so maybe they shouldn't even bother. I don't know. Yeah, I hated the Vita. Um, I love the you know, I love handhelds. I think, you know what, even if they just did, just support it. Just support what you do, Sony. Yeah. Release it and make games for it and promote it and talk about it and... <laughs> Don't just fucking ignore it and push it in a corner like it's a stepchild you never wanted. And the Vita is strong enough that you could, like, re relaunch it. Soft launch it, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Come over and say, hey, here's a bunch of games that we're throwing on the Vita. Yeah. Do, do it, save it for E3 and do a, a soft launch. Right? Yeah. You've already just released all these other things that people are... Because that hardware is still compatible. It's it still, is. It's still comparable. You can still do cross-play with it. Yeah. Um, so just relaunch, go, here's a bunch of software for the Vita. Boom, we're going to drop it in your lap. Yeah, that would be amazing, actually. Um, Give I, me a reason to want it. Had a few make, moments. Make Dean mail it back. <laughs> had a few moments this week where I considered going all digital. Wow. Yeah, really weird, eh? Are you serious? Yeah, because I don't what have time to, do? to sit and, and, and rub these things on me anymore, you know what I mean? And I thought if I could have them all right here, I can put them on whenever I want. And there's these flash sales that keep coming up. I'm like, man, I could have this game for four bucks. Yeah. Alundra. Dude, I went and Googled Alundra on eBay. Four dollars. Yeah, guess how much it is on eBay? More than four? Yeah, it's like 80 something dollars. You know what I mean? And when I really want a Lundra. So I started thinking, I could just go for flash sales, load up my Vita. I don't use my Vita for anything else. You're going to do a bunch of hashtag one of us following this video. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not, I, I'm, I mean, that's the, that's the title I'm not of saying I'm going to do it. Each who goes digital. I'm not saying I'm going to do it, but it's happening. I can see me tipping that way if things keep going the way they're going, I guess. Yeah. But yeah, anyway. Sell that kid. More time, more money. <laughs> never happen. Never happen. Yeah, Portal under. No, because now we can uh, download things together. Yeah. Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> Thanks for the question, Kyle. Thanks, Kyle. Next up, we have Mighty Q Dog at Mighty Q Dog. Uh, why do thermostats in Canada use Fahrenheit? In what other context is Fahrenheit used in Canada? Uh, modern Moderns. modern thermostats do not use Fahrenheit. Um, mine does uh, because it was built in the 80s. No, the modern, like all the hospitals just got all brand new ones, all Fahrenheit. Yeah, you can select Celsius. Probably, but they come as Fahrenheit. Really? Yeah. Oh. Um, and I'm guessing it's because we bought them from the States because they're cheaper. Oh, uh, maybe. My car's is in Celsius. Uh, the one in our bedroom, which is a newer one, is Celsius. Yeah, all the ones in my house are all Celsius. But I think all digital ones come set to Fahrenheit. You can change to Celsius. Hmm. Uh, but our, all of our ovens are Fahrenheit, I'm pretty sure, too. Yeah, because most of the cooking instructions comes from food from the States. The that States is Fahrenheit. Yeah. 
Because they refuse to yield. Right, so it just spills over here. So, to answer the question, I think ovens is the only other thing. Yeah, yeah. ovens and thermostats. Yeah. And bros, anything that's hot. Oh, boy. All right, let's move on. <laughs> Thanks for your question, Eric. <laughs> Thanks, Eric. Next up, we got uh, Bonus Barrel Rob at Ooh. Bonus Barrel says, What is the coolest video game weapon? I will be judging your answers. Good question. Good question. Yeah. Okay. Um... Couple ways to break this down. Vampire killer. The whip? Yeah. Okay. Now, is the question what is the coolest weapon that you would have in real life kind of thing? No, it's what the coolest weapon is. In a game. It's vampire killer. In a game, the coolest weapon is either the Buster Sword or the Gravity Gun from Half Life 2. Come on, man. Gravity. Master Sword, Vampire Killer, those ah. are both tops. Gravity gun, dude. You can pick things up and throw them around. <laughs> Physics. And the Buster Sword, because it's really big and huge. And you had one. You held one. And I held one. <laughs> I gotta go with Vampire Killer, man. That whip is sick. Yeah, it's cool in every game that it's in, that's for sure. Yeah. Can't argue that. But how iconic is that? I can see that thing from here, dude. The Master Sword? Buster, oh, the Buster Sword. Sword. <laughs> <laughs> you can see that from here. Yeah. You know? you know? And Oh, Sword. I got a full copy of Final Fantasy VII. There's three discs, right? Yeah. In, no, like, just disc, no box. Kevin gave it to me, and I don't need it because I have it. So, oh. you know, if you know anybody who needs Final Fantasy VII disc only, let me know. Just uh, give it to Adam. Oh yeah, I never thought of that. I don't know. Does he? Yeah, he, he does disc only. Yeah, there you go. All right, thanks for your question, Rob. Oh, what, you, what do you think? What do you think the coolest weapon is? Wait, yeah, right. our I think I remember them discussing this on Bonus Barrel actually oh. a while back. Yeah. Uh, next up, Super Robot Power Hour at Robot Power Hour P two. Are you really not hyped for Nier Automata? Dude, I am so hyped for Nier Auto Automata. <laughs> Did I say I wasn't hyped? I didn't mean to say I wasn't hyped. Um, I'm hyped for Last Guardian. I'm hyped for Final Fantasy XV. Um, I think maybe you were giving your list of things you were hyped for and it wasn't on it. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Oh, I'm so hyped for Nier 2, man. Um, but when it comes to pre-orders, maybe that's where it got mixed up too because I was probably thinking about how I'm not pre-ordering anything. But believe me, my friend... Near to, I will be there, because it is near to my heart. Oh, good. Uh, thanks for your question. Oh, boy. Another question from Super Robot Power Hour, P2. Why won't you admit that your brother is right and Dragon Quest is the better series? P.S. Final Fantasy VIII is a turd. Oh, my God! There's so many things wrong with that tweet! <laughs> Matt, come on, dude! Um, <laughs> I like deep stories in my RPGs. Dragon Quest doesn't have them. Uh, that's the simplest answer to the question. And Final Fantasy VIII, I mean, it's a little, it's not the greatest story, but it is a story. <laughs> and I love love stories in my games. You should do like a top five love stories in video games video. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for your question. Thanks, Matt. Next up, Bearsfjord, at Bearsfjord80. Look at that beard, dude. I know, it's a sick beard. Uh, it. This is the guy who's making our app. He's doing a great job. He'll be showing me a demo tomorrow. I'm going to look at it more. Get a, maybe a, a functional one. We're looking for beta testers soon. Can so I be one? If you're on iOS, you can Aww. definitely be a beta tester. Fail. Shoot me a message. Uh, so he says, why does P1 always got to be a dick? <laughs> How does he, does he know you very well? Well, since we were 10. Oh! <laughs> so we can trust his opinions? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I, I believe that I am... Uh, I treat everyone equally. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You know? Yeah. When did you answer this one? Why do I always got to be a dick? I think people just uh, don't like hearing things the way that they are. <laughs> <laughs> you hear that, Nick? <laughs> he understands. Now, is the dick. He knows who you are. Thanks for your question. <laughs> Next up, Julian Vega at JJ1986-2004. How can we convert Cartridge River Bros. P2? Wow, I stumbled over that. Yeah. To Apple, ruler of all tech. And I have uh, a fun fact for you, Julian. P2 already owns an iMac. Yeah. So three years ago, I bought my first iMac, and I fell in love with it. It was fantastic, and it's what converted me to Apple. From there, I got an iPhone, an iPad. The wife got a MacBook. Mm -hmm. She got an iPhone. My kid has an iPhone. Uh, my uncle got an iPhone. Uh, and his wife has an iPhone. So she does. So I went away uh, for a lot of sailing the last two years, and I had, was going to be able to use my iMac. So I gave it to P2 because he was going to start a new series uh, on the oh, yeah. site called uh, Can I Beat It or Can You Beat It? Something like that. <laughs> and uh, he was going to try and beat some of the harder games. Put that trailer up. It was a good trailer. In NES. Yeah, we should. Um, we'll release that and then people wonder why there's no videos. 
Let's not do that. Um, so I gave him my iMac uh, while I was gone. Little did he know, I had no intention of taking it back. That my plan was uh, when I returned to just buy a new one. So uh, I got home, bought myself a new iMac. He kept my old one, which uh, even a three-year-old iMac is still. It's pretty awesome. I bought it. It was the top tier one available. It's funny because my old PC was your old PC that I bought off you when you bought the iMac. Yeah. And that thing is old. Yeah. <laughs> so this was a huge upgrade. Yeah. So he is Mac. Uh, the reason he doesn't have an iPhone is because he's with Kudo, which yeah. is a mobile carrier up here. And I don't think they even have iPhones. They, they do, but you have to... Add, it's it's like essentially you're getting a contract, even though I'm mean, with a company that doesn't give contracts. Okay. But it's like a pseudo contract if you want an iPhone. So. So they're more expensive. They are. Okay. It would increase my bill by like thirty bucks a month. So. Oh yeah. So maybe when I my iPhone six, I'm gonna upgrade <laughs> that. I'll give that to him, and then he'll have an iPhone. Apple hand me downs are always better than what I have currently. Yeah. The current <laughs> Android stuff. So Not he's good. already a pseudo Mac guy. Yeah, I guess I am. I have nothing against either. I mean. I like them both, I guess. I don't really care. All I know is that Mac is pretty awesome. <laughs> Next up. Thanks for your question, Julian. Next up from Diego Avila, at a Latino lawyer. Is it true the NX will be a hybrid console slash gremlin, and if you play it after midnight, it turns into a virtual boy? Uh, let's go pass. Uh, I had heard that this was true. Uh, I also heard is this that... news from Brazil the Gamer yeah, again? I also heard that if you get your NX wet, it multiplies. Sweet. So when you get your NX... Whatever you do, do not pour water on it because you will end up with two or three or four NXs. Maybe that's why they're delaying it so much because they can't have that happen. <laughs> <laughs> they will be out of business by the end of the year. That is a great, that's awesome. Yeah. Now I gotta go watch Gremlins. Thanks, Thanks Diego. Great. Diego. And last question up for CC Answers from Matthew Bandy at XMapBandyX. Either of you ever skip school or fake an illness to play video games? Oh boy. I did in high school to play Final Fantasy VI. For eight hours straight. Nice. Uh, I don't think I ever called. I don't think I ever had. I was uh, sick for school, but I've definitely called in sick for work. Uh, I actually lost a job because I was playing Warcraft. <laughs> I forgot about adult life. Yeah. 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 So I used to work at a Rogers Video, um, and I stopped going to work when Warcraft came out, uh, like Vanilla WoW, because I was too busy trying to affirm the equipment for oh, raiding. Um, you had to be top tier, man. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I, I now take leave days based on big game releases at work. I'll take a week off uh, for games that I really want to play. And people at work laugh at me and judge me. And I'm like, well, when I took my week off, I did something I loved. And you took it off. You spent it with your mother-in-law. So who's the loser now? Ouch. I um, It's funny because, yeah, I, I, loved, I would love to book my vacation around E3 every year. Yeah. Just doesn't happen. But um, that and the NHL, the NFL Scouting Combine are the two biggest things I take a leave for. That's so funny. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, when I was going to NSC to take my accounting program, I uh, I definitely stayed home sick when Dark Souls came out. Did you? Yeah, and that was like within what the last two or three years. Four That's years. crazy. And you still ended up getting an accounting job right out of school. I did actually, and then I left it quickly. <laughs> <laughs> um, but. Uh, but as of for when I was a kid, I remember like if I was sick and I had the day off, I may take the next day off, but it wasn't never really just to play a game. I remember playing a lot of Dune. On Our Genesis. uncle broke his leg. Yeah, he was or his knee. He uh, tore his ACL. Yeah, and, and I uh, seen him playing Dune. That's how it started. He came home for for a summer. He was in rehabilitation for like uh, two months with his this torn ACL, yeah. and all he did was play Dune on the Sega Genesis. Yeah, this is D U N E, not Doom. Uh, D -O -O -N. Yeah, yeah. Now I want to be Baron Harkonnen. Man, Dune is great. Or Duke Atre Atreides. Um, but yeah, man, I would totally have come home sick to play Final Fantasy VI, but damn. Anyway, yeah. thank you, Matt, and welcome again to the club. Officially. I think that's it. That's it? That's it. That's all the answers. We did it, dude. So, uh, that's CC Weekly. Ending spiel. If you are watching this video on YouTube or listening to the podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, or Google Play, please head on over to www.cartridgeclub.org where you can check out other great podcasts, videos, and blogs such as Girlfriend vs. Retro Nonsense and STC Pod. If you're already a member of the Cartridge Club and you'd like to help contribute, you can go to www.patreon.com slash cartridge club where you can give as little or as much as you'd like and every cent goes directly back into the community helping to improve it uh, for all of its members. I'm getting really good at this. Yeah, man, that was pretty smooth. Yeah. You're like, Joe? I am almost <laughs> as good as Joe. <laughs> Did you help with his mic yet? Uh, I sent him a message about uh, using the, uh, the the audio MIDI to see if that's muting it. 
Uh, the picture he posted tonight of his Transformers and Beer podcast did have the power light on the mute. Ah. So I'm hoping to fix it. Uh, I haven't heard back. I asked him if he if they fixed it, but uh, he ignored me. He's a busy guy. He's a busy guy. There's a lot going on. He does. He, he had probably given the, his texter the night off, so he had no one to respond to my tweet. Texter. <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's CC Weekly. If you have Ultramar in your area, let us know. Um, and definitely check out U Force. Pretty sure it's fucking poison, man. It's uh, U Force. <laughs> All right, let's go take a picture. All right, appreciate that. See you next week.